archives of Prasar Bharti presents the timeless treasure of golden era. We would like to acquaint you with ancient Kiev, the mother of Rus cities. In 1982, upon the decision of UNESCO, the city marked its 1500th anniversary. One of the jubilee projects in Kiev was a monument to the city's founders, the Grand Princes Ki, Shek, and Khoriv, and their sister Libid, which now stands on the bank of the Dnieper, ancient Slav River, part and parcel of the first pages of our history, the trade route from the Varangians to the Greeks, which united Rus with other states and nations. Stara Kievska Hill. It was from here that the Rus land expanded the city of Grand Prince Ki, where later Grand Prince Volodymyr introduced Christianity in Rus. Yaroslav the Wise continued his father's work in glorifying and strengthening the ancient Rus state. The main grand entrance to Kiev, the city of Yaroslav the Wise, was the Golden Gates, which was renovated for the 1500th anniversary of Kiev. Preserved under its cupola are rooms of the original gates, dating back to the 11th century, which were destroyed by the hordes of Batu Khan in 1240. Built at the same time as the Golden Gates was the main metropolitan church of Kiev and Rus, St. Sophia Cathedral, pearl of ancient Rus architecture. For more than nine centuries, its cupola has been an adornment to the central part of our city, testifying to the former might of Kiev and Rus. Celebrated here were the most important events of the ancient Rus state, Ambassadors from all countries of the world were received here, and great rest princes were crowned here. The burial vault in the cathedral till this day preserves the sarcophagus of Yaroslav the Wise. Kiev's St. Sophia Cathedral, the first library in Rus, was founded here, as well as the first school and a center of book and chronicle writing. St. Sophia Cathedral was subjected to many invasions during its multi-century history, Mongol Tartars, Crimean Khans, Polish-Lithuanian feudals. The cathedral was restored in the Ukrainian Baroque style of the 17th, 18th centuries. Original 11th century frescoes and mosaics have been preserved in the cathedral's interior. They were executed in 178 shades of different colors. Extremely impressive till this day is the image of the Virgin Mary, Orens. Portrayed on the walls of ancient St. Sophia Cathedral are the most important events. A divine service took place here in 1654 in honor of the reunion of the Ukraine and Russia. In honor of this event, a monument to Bohdan Khmelnytsky, great hetman of the Ukraine, was erected in Sophia Square in the 19th century. He was the initiator of Ukraine's reunion with Russia. Towering against the rolling Kyiv hills on the approaches to Kyiv is the Kyiv Pechersk Lavra, the first and largest rest monastery. Antiquity seems to be exalting the intellect, industriousness, and talent of our ancestors. 
The central bell tower, a creation of the brilliant architect Godfrey Jochen Schedel in the 18th century, which dominates over the Lavra Ensemble, was located in the upper town of ancient Kiev. The main entrance of the Kiev Pichesk Lavra is the Trinity above the Gate Church, an architectural monument of the 11th, 18th centuries. The Lavra architectural ensemble was created in the 11th century when the first monks Anthony and Theodosi settled in the caves. For more than 1,000 years, pilgrims and believers traveled to Kiev, the Jerusalem of Ruslands, to worship the holy Kiev relics. The near and far caves were the burial places of saints. They have been preserved till this day on the territory of the present historic and cultural preserve. In 1988, during the millennium of the baptism of Rus, the complex over the far caves was presented to the Russian Orthodox Church where a monastery was founded. At the foot of the Kiev hills lies the lower town, the Padil, where merchants and craftsmen settled in the dale between the Dnieper and Pachayana rivers. It was here that the glory of Kiev craftsmen was born, where gunsmiths, potters, and jewelers made wares which attracted merchants from all parts of Europe. Padil is Kiev's historic gem. It has 178 historic monuments and 446 edifices of architectural renown. Ancient Padil is an architectural preserve zone in the city and it is being painstakingly and meticulously restored. A tourist center is being created here. Contemporary architects in rebuilding Padil have designed new buildings taking into account the architecture of the ancient city, blending it with the new structures. Already restored is Kiev's first fountain, Samson. Hostini Dvir, rows of shops, has revived the city's trade center. Across from the first higher educational establishment in Russia, the Kiev Mohila College stands a monument to its brilliant student, Rihori Skavrada, Ukrainian philosopher, poet, and enlightener of the 18th century. Many cult architectural monuments of Podil, after their restoration, have become museums, concert halls, and exhibit pavilions.
St. Andrew's Church has become one such concert hall. It is a branch of the St. Sophia Museum Preserve, the last masterpiece of the genius architect Bartholomew Rastrelli. This 18th century architectural wonder stands on a high hill at the foot of Kiev's principal street, as described by the well-known writer, Kievite Mikhailo Bulhakov, Andreevsky Spusk, Andreevsky Descent, where Kievites annually celebrate Kiev Day with art exhibitions, theatrical and variety shows. The architecture of every building on Andreevsky Spusk is enchanting. But the palace of Richard the Lionheart, in the style of British Gothic, is especially impressive. The architectural chronicle of ancient Kiev acquaints us with other wonderful structures, especially the large-scale construction undertaken in the 19th century. This building, a vivid representative of eclectic architectural style, is now a gift shop. This is the Ukrainian State Bank. It was built by architect Alexander Kobelev in the spirit of Italian Gothic. But the most famous monument of the 19th century architecture is the home with Chimeris by architect, traveler, and artist Vladislav Horodetsky, built in the modern style. The Museum of Ukrainian Fine Art was also designed by this talented architect. On display at this museum are the best canvases of well-known Ukrainian artists. Presently on display is an exhibition devoted to the 175th birth anniversary of Taras Shevchenko, great Ukrainian poet, artist, and revolutionary democrat. There are many memorable places in Kiev linked with the name of the great Ukrainian bard. Kiev State University bears his name since 1939. That same year, a monument was unveiled to the great poet during the Shevchenko Festival Days. The Kiev Opera and Ballet Theater, the Institute of Art, a square, a park, and a boulevard on which the Taras Shevchenko Museum stands, all bear his name. The Ukrainian people sacredly revere the memory of their talented poets, writers, artists, and musicians. Standing on the smallest square of the city, Teatrainne Theatrical, next to the building of the Kiev Opera and Ballet Theater, is a monument to Mykola Lysenko, the founder of Ukrainian classical music.
Standing in a shady park next to the former summer residence of the Russian Tsars, Marinsky Palace, architecture Bartholomew Rastrelli, is a wonderful image of the Ukrainian poetess Lesya Ukrainka, designed by sculptor Halina Kalchenko. A square and the Ukrainian drama theater located in the picturesque corner of cave bear the name of Ivan Franko, the ardent paver of the way, great Ukrainian poet, writer, and philosopher. One of the 14 theaters of Kiev, where more than 1,000 men of art are employed, is the Ukrainian drama theater. Different cultural events constantly take place in Kiev. Film festivals, art exhibitions, concerts by visiting musicians and theatrical groups, and stage personalities. The millennium of the baptism of Rus was broadly marked in the best theaters and churches of ancient Kiev.
the influence of ancient Kyiv on the cultural life of the Ukraine has been tremendous. The fruitful and diverse activity of the Ukrainian Society for Friendship and Cultural Relations with foreign countries, other public organizations, and creative unions of men of art and culture promote the creative enrichment of the cultures of all Soviet nations and nationalities. Yeah. <laughs>